Good morning, parents. Let's take a few moments to center ourselves, be still and set our intention for the day. But before we dive into the content, please do show your support by liking and subscribing to this channel. Not only does it encourage us to continue making more content, but it also helps our videos to rank higher and be made available to more parents. Let's take a deep breath, let go of any negativity, and fully connect with yourself in this present moment. So yesterday we read the scripture, Matthew 8, and we included 18 through 22. We want to just today pick up some notes from the commentary regarding that, and then we'll continue reading the scripture. So it's talking about those who said they were going to follow Christ. And the commentary notes, one of the scribes was too hasty in promising. He offers himself to be a close follower of Christ. He seems to be very resolute. Many resolutions for religion are produced by sudden conviction and taken up without due consideration. So we commit ourselves quickly to things based on our emotions at that moment, but don't really count the cost. Don't really wrap our mind around what it really means, what we're really committing to. It says, these come to nothing. When this scribe offered to follow Christ, one would think Jesus would have been encouraged. A single scribe might do more credit and service than 12 fishermen. So this person who asked him to follow him, said he would follow him, is a scribe. But Christ saw his heart and answered to its thoughts, and therein teaches all how to come to Christ. The scribe's resolve seems to have been from a worldly, covetous principle, but Christ had no place to lay his head. And if he follows him, he must not expect to fare better than he, Jesus, feared. We have reason to think that this scribe went away and he never followed Jesus. In the other instance, another was too slow. Delaying in doing is as bad. So delayed obedience is still disobedience. He did not have true zeal for the work. If Christ re requires our service affection, even for the nearest and dearest relatives and for things otherwise, our duty must give way. So there are times that we may have something that is tangible, that is a, a sign of good responsibility to do, but we have to look to Christ to see what is the top priority for him not for us. He's going to ask us to do things at certain times that are not necessarily convenient for us, but he'll never ask us to do something that will be detriment to us or detrimental to other people. So he says, if Christ requires our service affection, even for the nearest and dearest relatives and for things otherwise our duty must give way. An unwilling mind never wants an excuse. So it means that an unwilling mind will always be able to find an excuse. So when we don't want to do something, we, we start to rationalize things. So we will have no shortage of excuses. Comparing them together, it shows that we are brought to Christ by convictions, by force of his call on us. So how does his call resonate with us? How deeply does it impact us? If our heart is for Christ, then it's going to go deep enough that we're going to let go of everything else. If it's just kind of a fancy in that moment, a momentary conviction and something that's more of an emotional movement, then we're going to find ways to kind of get out of it. If we commit to it, we're not going to follow through. We hastily commit. We're going to find ways to rationalize our way out of it. Okay. So let's continue reading. We're going to, we're still in Matthew 8. We're now going to pick up on verse 23. And when Jesus was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with waves, but he was asleep. So after speaking to the multitudes, healing so many people, there were so many people around, Christ said, we need to go on the other side. So they get in the ship and they're on their way to the other side. Christ goes and he falls asleep. The storm rises up and his disciples come to him, awake him and say, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? O ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? And this is the God that you serve. This is your father, that even the winds and the storms and the rains and all the elements obey him. They are his creation. He speaks 
and everything obeys. Nothing is a challenge for your father. You want to remember this as you go to him, as you're in relationship with him. So let's look at what Matthew Henry has to add. This is a comfort to those who go down to the sea in ships and are often in peril there to reflect that they have a savior to trust in and pray to who knows what it is to be on the water and to be in the storms there. Those who are passing with Christ over the ocean of this world must expect storms. So we're all passing over the ocean of this world and must expect storms. And some of them seem like they're going to take us out. They're going to destroy us. And in the same way his disciples called upon him, the same way you get to call on him. His human nature, like ours, in everything but sin, was wearied, and he slept at this time to try the faith of his disciples. So this was a test. He knew the storm was coming. They, in their fear, came to their master. Thus it is in a soul. When lust and temptations are swelling and raging, and God is, as it were, asleep, this brings it to the brink of despair. Then it cries for a word from his mouth. Lord Jesus, keep not silent to me, for I am undone. Many that have true faith are weak in it. So let that be an encouragement to you. Many that have true faith are weak in it. So even though you may feel your faith is weak, it is no less true, right? If you're a child of God. Many that have true faith are weak in it. Christ's disciples are apt to be disquieted with fears in a stormy day, to torment themselves that things are bad with them, and with dismal thoughts that they will be worse. Great storms of doubt and fear in the soul under the power of the spirit of bondage sometimes end in a wonderful calm created and spoken by the spirit of adoption. They were astonished. They never saw a storm so turned at once into a perfect calm. He that can do this can do anything necessary to encourage confidence and comfort in him in the most stormy day within or without. So whether your torment and your turmoil is internal or whether it's external, he has the ability to turn it around instantly. doesn't matter how long you've been going through and how long the storm has been raging. He has the ability to stop the storm instantly. So you cry out and call out to your father and say, as you stood with that storm, I ask you to manage and still this storm in my life, in my heart, in my mind, and trust that he loves you so much that with a smile on his face, he says, peace, be still to your storm. If you haven't done so already, please, 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 pretty please, do click that thumbs up button to let me know that you see value in this. Also, please remember to check out your app store for our Coaching for Parents app. It has some amazing free content that is going to be invaluable to you as you navigate raising your tweens and teens. And as you go into your day, remember that you are highly blessed, greatly favored, and deeply loved, and that you already are victorious in him. So go forward today with the expectation of success. And keep your eye open for little treats that he may have already planted along the pathway of this day for you. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, for another moment of meditation.